Have you ever looked at the things you make? Whether it's painting, writing, music, drawing, and felt that no matter how hard you try, you never feel good enough. Do you look at those around you and feel the pain that no matter how hard you practice, you'll never be as good as them? Do you think that they look down on you, pity you for doing everything you can? Do you lock yourself away for hours to barely put a pen to paper, a lie on a page? Do you ever feel totally and utterly alone? Learning to love art is a lonely process. It withers away your self-worth and your confidence. It takes time away from those you care about, and you have to wonder every moment of every day, is it worth it? Am I wasting my time? Why am I doing this? Why do I draw? And look back, looks you in the eye and holds your hand and tells you with tears in its eyes, this, this is why you draw. You knew it all along. You just needed someone to tell you you weren't crazy. That feeling you get when a person looks at what you've made and smiles or cries or yells and screams and jumps for joy. This is why you draw. This is why you paint. This is why you write. This is why you make things because they aren't just things anymore. It is a space between you and them. It is a moment in time that everything makes sense. Art is the most loving thing you can ever give to someone. Hi. That intro got me thinking. And I had a whole review planned, a real one. And I was, actually did, record most of it. I'm going to scrap it all. You what? Because of two reasons. One, I don't have enough footage to make an interesting background video. So I have to have uh, myself in front of a screen uh, while you see uh, background footage play behind me. Transition, have you given this movie a listen? But also because doing a recap of the story this short isn't doing anyone good. So instead, I'm going to say my thoughts of the movie, I'm going to give it a rating, and then I'm going to say what the movie meant to me. And I think that's how it should go. On a technical level, look back even just from the trailer is amazing. The animation style fits Fujimoto's perfectly. The movement and the emotion that you can get off of any of the characters is amazing. Fujino and Kiyomoto feel incredibly real. They are amazingly voice acted, and the animation complements everything about them. One of my favorite shots in the whole anime is Fujino running through the rain, and I bought a copy of Look Back, the actual manga. It's in my hand right now, you can't see it. But I looked at the page, but I'd even say that the anime does it justice a hundred times over. I equate it to seeing pure joy coming off of Fujino as she runs. In every sense of the word, Look Back's production, its animation, its sound and music is perfect. I give Look Back a 10 out of 10. I don't think that was a surprise. What was a surprise for me was how much watching it hurt. Look Back is a painful watch for anybody who has ever considered themselves an artist in any capacity. It has everything that is our greatest fears and greatest regrets and our greatest hopes. The pain you get when the things you draw are compared to your peers or others. The pain you get when you are so isolated in your work, you don't get a chance to talk to people, you don't 
get a chance to live a life. You get people looking at you oddly, not understanding why you put yourself through this. What could possibly be worth hours upon hours upon hours of drawing, singing, dancing, anything you're passionate about? Why would you do it? Why would you do it if you're not good at it? It's the worst part because most of us aren't. We're not amazing. Even me, here, with this little VTuber model I made, there are better ones. I'm far from even midway. And it's a question that we do ask ourselves every single day. Is it worth it? Why would we keep doing this? It's a question Fujino asks all the way up until she meets Yamoto. And that question is answered in a heartbeat. Kiyomoto's smile. It's what Fujino remembers up to the very last moment of the movie. It's Kiyomoto's smile. And it's not just her smile. It is how much her little silly four-page manga meant to her. So much so that it transcends time and space, essentially. I was shocked by the ending of this anime because I assumed it was just going to stop at Kiyomoto's death. I didn't think Fujimoto would rip apart space and time to give these two characters some kind of closure. It was, I don't know, it felt like a dream while watching it, and then it hit like a miracle when that manga that Kiyomoto makes flies back underneath the doorframe and back into Fujino's hands, and she realizes, I think, somehow, somewhere, her best friend's okay. And that is what almost got me. And I think that is what Fujimoto, the author and the author of Chainsaw Man, that I, I love dearly as an, as an anime and as a manga, was trying to say. There are other bits about the manga and the anime that you should know. One is that this was released about a few years after the Kyo anime, the Kyoto animation uh, arson attack. If you don't know about that, I would recommend reading up on it. I am not an expert, but I was aware of when it happened, and it bears some resemblance do some of the bits in Look Back, and probably colors Fujimoto's thoughts and feelings when writing it heavily. But even in face of tragedy, even in face of self-doubt, even though it didn't even seem like Fujino at the beginning wanted to draw for anything outside of just pride and misplaced need to be the best, she found joy in it. She found joy in drawing, and she found joy with Kyomoto, so much so that it became her career. So much so that even when she never met Kyomoto, she still picks up drawing again, years later. Drawing is not just an obsession, it is, and for any creative endeavor, almost ingrained in your soul to the point where you can't live as you are without it. It's why artists are so passionate about things like AI or things like people stealing their art. It's not just some commodity that someone's taken from them. It is a literal piece of their soul. And so many people take that for granted. All I can say is that if you care about art, cared about art in any capacity, at any point in your life, you should watch Look Back. It hits that feeling 
so hard, and yet it doesn't leave you despondent at the end. Despite everything, it is still a hopeful story. And I think that's something that is really needed right now. That's the review. I guess, in a way, it's my 3,000 subscriber special. If you stuck around this long, enjoyed the video in any way, consider subscribing. Or just leaving a like and a comment. It helps the algorithm a ton. And as much as I do art for the passion, I do like it when people see it. So, yeah. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time. Bye-bye.